हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी स्टैंडर्ड स्पेसिफिकेशन स्पेसिफिकेशन डिस्क्राइब द नेचर एंड द क्लास ऑफ द वर्क मटेरियल्स टू बी यूज्ड इन द वर्क वर्कमैनशिप एक्सेट्रा एंड इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ द वर्क द कॉस्ट ऑफ अ वर्क डिपेंड्स मच ऑन द स्पेसिफिकेशन Specification should be clear. Now we had bifurcated the specification into two types. That is, general specification and detailed specification. Purpose of giving specification: the cost of an unit quantity of work is governed by its specification. It means that the cost of a unit quantity of work is generally determined by the specification. Specification of a work is required to describe the quality. and quantity of different materials required for a construction work and is one of the essential contract document this also specifies the workmanship and the method of doing the work thus specification of a work serves as a guide to a supervising staff of a contractor as well as to the owner to execute the work to their satisfaction a work is carried out according to its specification and the contractor is paid for the same any change in specification changes the tendered rate as the rate of work is based on the specification a contractor can calculate the rates of various items of work in tender with his procurement rates of material and labor thus tender rate without specification of work is baseless incomplete and invalid therefore specification is necessary to specify the equipment tools and plants to be engaged for a work and thus enables to procure them beforehand the necessity of specification is to verify and check the strength of material for a work involved in a project now generally the type of specification is of two types first one is general specification and the next one is detailed specification starting with the general specification in general specification nature and class of work names of material that should be used are described only a brief description of each and every item is given in the general specification it is useful for estimating the project as well as the general specification do not form a part of the contract document now the next one is detailed specification the detailed specification forms a part of a contract document they specify the qualities quantities and proportions of material and the method of preparation and execution for a particular item of work in a project the detailed specification of the different items of the work are prepared separately and they describe what the work should be and how they shall be executed while writing the detailed specification the same order sequence as the work is to be carried out is to be maintained now we have various types of specification starting with the specification for rcc construction now the specification for rcc construction is that shuttering shall be done using seasoned wooden boards of thickness not less than 30 mm it means that the shuttering which is used for rcc construction should be well seasoned and thickness should not be less than 30 mm all the joints are perfectly closed and lined up the shuttering and framing is sufficiently braced nowadays timber shuttering is replaced by steel plates all the framework is removed after 21 days of curing without any shocks or vibrations all reinforcement bars conform indian standard specifications and are free from rust grease oil etc the covers to concrete are perfectly maintained as per the code the material proportion should be as per the specification of the concrete number of cement bags required for a specific cement concrete ratio is given as for cement concrete of ratio 1:1:2 to 2 requires 11 number of bags of 50 kg here one proportion is for cement one is for fine aggregate that is sand and two proportion is for coarse aggregate 
Now for cement concrete of ratio 1 raised to 1.5 raised to 3 requires 7.8 number bags of 50 kg. For 1 raised to 2 raised to 4 requires 6 number of bags. For 1 raised to 3 raised to 6 requires 4.25 number of bags. And for 1 raised to 4 raised to 8 requires 3.2 number of bags of 50 kg. Now the next is the specification for brick masonry in cement mortar. The brick shall be of first class, regular in shape, size and color. It means that the brick which is used in the brick masonry should conform the first class standard, should be regular in shape, size and color. The brick should be free from flaws, cracks and lumps of any kind. Brick shall have minimum crushing strength of 10.5 Newton per mm square. The brick shall not absorb the water more than one sixth of the weight of the brick. The sand used shall be medium coarse, clean, sharp, free from clay, mica and other organic matter. The cement used shall satisfy the requirements of Bureau of Indian Standard. The mortar is designated in specified proportion of cement and sand. The materials are weighed or measured and mixed on watertight platform after allowing bulkage of sand. Bricks before laying shall be thoroughly soaked in water. The bricks laid truly horizontal in course with frog upwards. The brickwork shall be raised 1 meter in height at a strength all round the building. That is all about the standard specification. Thank you very much students.